In our last episode, we followed our guide, Old Longfellow, all the way from Far Harbor to the doorstep of Acadia. It is here where Captain Avery told us we were most likely to find Kasumi Nakano. Opening the door, we head inside to try and find the leader of this place. We see a door to the right, but it looks like the main chamber is straight ahead. As we approach... You know, when I first climbed this mountain above the fog, I thought to myself, now here is a metaphor worth taking in. You've entered a place of clarity, understanding, peace. While you're here in Acadia, Synthkind welcomes you as long as you welcome us. Well, in that case, I want a Nuka Cola, some stem packs, Kasumi Nakano returned to her family, and, um, hmm, a pony? <laughs> I see. I'm afraid some of those things I'm not in a position to give. What are you? I told you. I'm the old synth on the mountain. (laughs) I know the plastic skin and tubes out the back can be unsettling. But I want to ask you to look past that. Tell me why you're here and I'll try to help you. Dude, drop the act. You brainwashed a young girl, and I'm here to bring her home. Ah, you must mean Kasumi. Yes, I can understand why you would feel that way. Abandoning your entire life is... a bold step. I came here looking for Kasumi Nakano. Really? I'm impressed. Few would brave the kind of journey you've had for the sake of someone else. Kasumi is here. She's safe and unharmed, and you're free to see her if you'd like. Before you do, though, tell me, do you think Kasumi is a synth? We're not answering any more questions until you play straight with us. Just who the hell are you, really? There's only one synth with that kind of face and a mind of his own, and I only see him when I look in a mirror. Nick? It can't be you. Don't give me that. What are you trying to pull? I've never seen you before in my life. Please, if you're willing to give me a chance, I can explain. I know this joke. Two androids walk into a bar. I'm afraid the punchline isn't going to be very funny. Nick's right. I call bullshit. You don't really know each other. Is it so hard to believe? Two synths. Earlier models both capable of advanced thought, both showing signs of age, wear, and tear. If we didn't know each other at all, that would be far more unlikely. Is this a joke? Do you really know, Nick? Let me tell you what I know, and you can judge for yourself. All right, Dima. We'll humor you. Keep talking. This all started over a century ago, when we were first created. We were prototypes, Nick. The first synths capable of independent thinking and judgment. Keep talking. One of the Institute's experiments had to do with how our brains could process personality. If we could handle individualized feelings and behaviors, I was allowed to develop mine based on experience. But with you, they wanted to try transferring an entire personality into you. It took several attempts before the personality imprint worked. I saw you wake up not knowing who or what you were so many times. I couldn't let them do it to you anymore. We were the only two prototypes they made. I literally saw myself in you. You were my brother, Nick. I helped you escape the Institute. We left together. If I were your brother, I'd remember. That's where you'd be wrong. This happened over a century ago. There's... there's only so much memory that can fit into the prototype brains we have. Ah, I've heard enough. I think you and I need to talk about this. Maybe not now, though. Is he really your brother? If he is, it's news to me. 
Can sense even be related? Just because we're from the same assembly line, does that make us family? I gotta think about this. Is it really possible that you wouldn't remember any of this? You mean between the Institute fail-safes, the beatings I've taken over the years, and plain old age? Or are you buying this hole? There's only so much room up there argument. I don't know. It's not like we've got the instruction manual. We need to get back to why we're here. Kasumi Nakano. We'll talk later. This is a lot to take in. Nick, I don't need you to believe me. I'm just glad to see you again. Whenever you're ready, I'll be here. Now, about young Kasumi. It's important that you understand exactly why she's here. I asked you before if you think she's really a sin. If you could indulge me with an answer. Why are you asking? Because she came here with that very question. And the answer changes every part of her world. Who or what she is isn't important. But it is. It's everything. Imagine just looking at your own hands and having to wonder, was I born with these, or were they manufactured? She's a synth. That's why she left home. Kasumi had honest questions about herself. She came here for answers. She's human, and she has a family waiting for her. But imagine what it means if you're wrong. If Kasumi is a synth, then she doesn't have a family. She never had one. Think about how she must feel. None of us take this transition lightly. She's facing the possibility of her entire life being a lie. That someone stripped her very identity from her and made her into something she isn't. I want you to understand that before you see her. She has a chance here to live as a synth not hiding, not pretending to be something else. One more question, if you'll indulge me. You're here for Kasumi, but I suspect there could be another reason you came to us. Tell me, are you a synth? How would I even know? I'm afraid if you're looking for some biological test we can do, there isn't any. None that aren't fatal. Instead, you have to look for the signs, holes in someone's memory, feelings of unexplained isolation, odd dreams. But ultimately, you have to decide for yourself. What do you believe? Have you ever questioned your humanity? Mm, no, but if I squint real hard in the mirror, sometimes I look like someone else. <laughs> I'm afraid when I try that trick, nothing really changes. I have to be honest, um... In the back of my mind, I've always suspected. That's what I thought. I'm a human being, not a synth. Are you sure? I don't mean to question you, but what's the first memory you have? You're treading on very personal territory. Back off. Okay. You're not ready to have this conversation. Whatever you believe, we will accept you for who you are. Synth or human. I'm not gonna tell my life story to someone I barely know. Let's hear your answer first. I was in a laboratory. In the Institute. They were pulling pieces of my head out. Something about wanting to test some neural process. That was every day for months. Strapped down, operated on, and then I was out. The Institute has fail safes to strip memories that could identify where they are, how to find them, but I do remember being quite content. I was free. That is my earliest memory. Now, yours? I was with my husband. We were... getting ready for the day. I had to take care of my son, Sean. And... 
Well, lots happened since then. But no memories before then? No childhood? Your first best friend? Your first kiss? That's usually a sign. Data is easy to migrate, but feelings... That's a hard thing to transfer into another mind. I remember being in my house the day the bombs fell. We... we ran to the vault. We were frozen. I was the only survivor. No memories before then? Just a single day, and then waking up alone? We so easily accept what's presented to us as the truth, don't we? Isn't it funny how a memory can feel like a whole different reality? People, places, even sounds and colors can change. Or someone else has changed them. I won't lie to you. There will always be other explanations. Trauma, disease, the background radiation. They all take their toll on the mind. But I can promise you that we will accept you, no matter what you decide you are. Dude, spare me the lecture. Fine. I'm not a synth. End of discussion. I understand. I won't pry any further. I've heard enough. Where is Kasumi Nakano? Of course. Kasumi is usually working down below. You can see her whenever you like. Thank you. You've given me a lot to think about. I'm glad to hear it. Acadia is open to you. Feel free to walk the grounds. Introduce yourself to my co-founders, Faraday and Chase. And I'm sure you're eager to talk to Kasumi. She's usually working down below. Is there anything else you need from me? Tell me more about this place, Acadia. All I want is to bring as many synths here as I can, and give them a chance to know what they really are. To embrace it. Beyond that, we just want to live in peace. I don't have any grand plans for expansion. Just existing as we are now is enough. Was there anything else? So, everyone here in Acadia is a Sith? Yes. Either they were escapees we managed to find before the Institute could, or they were victims of a mind wipe, and we revealed the truth to them. You are from the Commonwealth, like Kasumi, yes? I'm sure you've had your own experiences with my kind. Well, I know Nick, obviously. Yes. Of course. I'd like to hear about your experiences first. After I left the Commonwealth, it was decades before I met another of my kind. At first, I didn't believe it. I'm a prototype. I escaped long before synths could pass for human. I thought the person I was talking to was deluded at first, and then I realized the truth. That we were the same. I didn't know it then, but that's when Acadia really started. I've been impressed with the sense I've come across. That's good to hear. I hope your opinion of us only continues to get better. From what I've seen, sense are just machines. Nothing more. Ignorance doesn't do your mind justice. Think about what you're saying. Isn't the human body just a machine? That doesn't stop it from being human. Walk through Acadia. Talk to the synths living here. In time, I hope your opinion of us changes. I don't really have a, an opinion about synths. I suppose that's fair. Ambivalence is a step closer to acceptance than hatred. Well, at least I hope. Is there anything else? Who are you? What's your story? I came to this island over a century ago, hiding from my creators, the Institute. But after my escape felt secured, I was left with nothing. No program task. No false memories. I spent a year just sitting in a cave. Just sitting. One day, it finally occurred that maybe... 
I could decide for myself what to do, who I was. I've been doing that ever since. Was there anything else? Here we can unlock new dialogue depending upon the other factions in the game that we've sided with. If we're a member of the Brotherhood of Steel... I'm in the Brotherhood of Steel. And we have plenty to say about Siths. How dangerous they are. We're not dangerous. Those who've used us tried to replace humans with my kind. They're dangerous. All we want is to live in peace. On our own. See for yourself. Walk through Acadia. Talk to my people. We aren't a threat to anyone. I don't suppose there's any way you and your people will surrender peacefully. I appreciate that. I do. But judging by the reputation your leaders have, I doubt they would accept surrender even if I wanted to offer it. Even if they would take us prisoner, we can't live in cages ever again. If you want us, fine. But we'll fight for this. For Acadia's existence. Consider my offer. Just see what we're trying to accomplish here. What have you got to lose? The very fact that synths exist is a threat to humanity. You're set on this? Fine. But I'm not going anywhere. And I'm not going to stoop to your level and swing first. Don't squander this opportunity. Take a chance to see that synths aren't the danger you've been told we are. If we're nothing but technology to you, then remember, it's how technology is used that's important. Not its mere existence. I guess we'll see. It's all I can ask. Give Acadia a chance. Perhaps one day, all of humanity will come to accept us. Even the Brotherhood. All right. I'll reserve judgment for now. Thank you. If we're a member of the Railroad... I'm part of a group that helps since. A Railroad. Really? I don't understand why a group dedicated to helping synths would convince them through fear that their only option is to hide. Yes, they volunteer for the memory wipe. Yes, not knowing you're a synth makes it harder for the Institute to find you. But the cost... I know how frightening it is, the risk of capture, but sacrificing what you are? Avoiding the true struggle to be accepted as our own form of life? Are you saying you don't want the Railroad's help? It's not about that. It's about how you've let fear blind your cause. Ideals aren't going to protect escaped sense. We do what we have to. I know that's what you think. I just... No. No, I shouldn't judge. I'm over here, far from the Commonwealth. In relative safety. I didn't come to argue. I just wanted you to know we're out there, helping your people. I know. I'm... Sorry. It's easy for me to worry about our ideals while I'm so far away from the Commonwealth. In relative safety. I hadn't thought about it like that. I'm sorry. So am I. Your heart is in the right place. And it's unfair of me to judge while I enjoy relative safety from so far away. If by this point we've already destroyed the Institute... You should know the Institute has been destroyed. What? It's over? No more coarser hunts? No more slavery? But that also means the technology to make the synths is lost. Our origins have been buried. Not to mention the loss of human life. Sorry. I'm not going to judge the actions of someone who's wiped out a great evil. You have our gratitude. Sadly, Dima doesn't have anything to say if we're a member of the Minutemen. However, if we joined the Institute... I'm just gonna tell you right now, Dima. I'm in the Institute. That's... quite an admission to make. I'm used to the Institute striking from the shadows. I'll say this to you. I'm not your enemy. 
I only wish to live here, in peace, with my people. As a scientist, can you not see the value of independent synth life? You have a chance here to witness how wondrous that could be. All you have to do is do nothing. Don't tell your fellow researchers about us. Don't tell them we're here. I don't suppose there's any way you and your people would return to the Institute peacefully. I appreciate the offer. I do, actually. No one wants bloodshed, but we can't go back. And I'm not going to hide. If you want us, fine. But we'll fight for this. For Acadia's existence. Consider my offer. Don't say anything. What have you got to lose? I'm not making deals with you. Fine. But I'm not going anywhere. And I'm not going to stoop to your level and swing first. Don't squander this opportunity. Take a chance to see that synth independence is worth cultivating. We really are humanity's children, and it's time for us to grow. I'll think about your offer. It's all I can ask. Give Acadia a chance. Perhaps one day, all of humanity will come to accept us, including the Institute. Fine. I'll keep your secrets for now. Thank you. Now, was there anything else I can do for you? I should get going. Of course. Perhaps we're in there a long time. Are you feeling all right? I'm fine. You worry too much. Sometimes I feel like you don't worry enough. You know we blew three more relays this week. I'm coming in. You stay right there. With that, we start a new quest, Acadian Ideals. We need to help the synths of Acadia, and in particular, Faraday and Chase. It was Faraday whose voice was on the other side of that glass, and soon he races into the room to chat with Dima. I was having a hard enough time keeping up with repairs before all this nonsense with the Atom Lunatics. They're nothing you need to be concerned about. It's not them. I'm concerned about you, Dima. You can't solve all the world's problems. Certainly not all at once. Dearest Faraday, relax. All will be fine. With that, Dima walks back to his chair, and Faraday returns to whatever that room was where he came from. This finally gives us an opportunity to explore. We see a huge telescope in the middle of this observatory. The dome has a number of holes in it, exposing the starlit sky beyond. This conversation we just had with Dima raises a really interesting question and presents us with a problem. We've been focused on young Kasumi Nakano, whether or not she's a synth, our job is to make sure she's safe and maybe bring her back home. But upon arrival, Dima asks us, are we a synth? And as a player, to my surprise, we learned that the sole survivor can't remember back any further than to the moment just before the bombs dropped. That moment at the beginning of the game, when we're getting ready for the morning, when the vault -Tec salesman arrives at our door, that's the furthest back in time the sole survivor can remember. How? How could the sole survivor not remember being a lawyer or being in the military? If he or she could remember further back, why did the sole survivor tell Dima that the earliest memory they could remember was that morning of the day the bombs dropped? Could Dima be onto something? Could the sole survivor really be a synth? I explored my thoughts on the matter in a video called Is the Soul Survivor a Synth? that you can watch here. But back to the job at hand. Acadia is chocked full of containers, and we can take from all of them without stealing. That makes Acadia a wonderful place to hit up to make use of the scrounger perk. We can walk away with a ton of caps and ammunition. To the northwest, we find a staircase going to an upper level. Here we also find a door, but at the moment it requires a key. It doesn't really require a key. It'll open up to us a bit later on. In the middle of this floor, we see a number of terminals that we can't interact with. They all glow blue and appear to have some sort of text scrolling past. We can't interact with any of them. However, if we look closely, we can read a little bit of the text. Error invalid handle. Romco Industries, in apocalyptic situations, please reboot system. 
air. There's no one left, is there? Oh, God. Override protocol A. System override engaged. Please reboot system. And then it just pretty much repeats itself. I wonder who it was who wrote, There's no one left, is there? Oh, God. Someone from the observatory, maybe? Or maybe it's just an Easter egg. When done looting the containers on this level, we can take the staircase up to the next floor. We find a platform that circles the perimeter, and the platform is lined with more of these terminals. We find a rat away on a crate, and at the very end of the platform, we find a table upon which lies the Acadia Storage Key. We'll snag this for now. It doesn't open up that locked door we found a moment ago. No, this has a role to play later on. When done exploring the observatory, we can move into Faraday's room. We see that this room also is filled with computers and a ton of containers to loot. Looks like Faraday sleeps here. We find an owned bed in a corner, but we can loot his footlocker. Against the glass, we find a couple of desks and a terminal, Faraday's terminal, locked with a master lock. I'm giving you trouble, I could give that terminal. Looks like Nick really doesn't buy the whole brother story yet, if he's willing to hack into Dima's terminal here. But we don't need his help. After hacking the terminal, we find only one entry. System status. Array status online. Memory integrity 94.7%. CPU load 31.5%. System errors. Array 17 offline. Array 4 drive intermittent response. Array 6 drive B7 not responding. Well, this doesn't really tell us much. Perhaps we can learn more by talking with Faraday. Hey. So, you've talked to Dima. You know why we're here. And I certainly hope that you'll consider helping us. Dima's vision is worth fighting for. Tell me about yourself, Faraday. Me? I don't know why you'd care. I escaped the Institute, just like others here. Never had my mind wiped, thankfully. I like to think I came along right when Dima needed me. I found him before all this, before Acadia. He needed my help, though he refused to admit it. He's always been stubborn like that. Anyway, I've been by his side ever since, making sure he has everything he needs. So you're a synth? I am. I hope that's not a problem for you. It's not really any of my concern. No, I suppose it's not. Still, though, we could use the help. Dima, especially. This whole thing, all of it, is... Ridiculous. Well, I wouldn't expect you to fully understand what we're trying to do. What Dima wants for all of us. You're right. It is a good cause. Synths definitely deserve to be safe, just like everyone else. It's so good to hear that. Very encouraging. Please, make sure Dima knows that as well. He's put so much of himself into this. All his time and energy devoted to helping others. He never stops to think of himself. Sometimes I worry about... Well, if I wasn't here to make sure his equipment is all functional, and that's not even mentioning maintaining the fog condensers, so many things to keep track of. Right, right. Wouldn't want him blowing a fuse, huh? Uh, no, not really. You do all this work yourself? Mostly, yes. I get help from the others when I can, but no one else really understands Dima the way I do. If you say so. Seems like you're just wasting your time to me. Well... It's my time to waste, isn't it? Seems like he's lucky to have you helping. Thank you. That's very kind. Dima looks like he's had a lot of work done. Well, that's certainly an understatement. Between the two of us, we've made so many modifications. He was just a prototype, never built for all this. It took a lot to overcome the limitations of the original design and expand his memory. It really is remarkable, isn't it? He's overcome so much. He's become so much more than he once was. And all he thinks of is others. Can you tell me about the fog condensers? Oh, those? Dima and I designed them when it became clear the fog was only getting worse. They're effective, but have such a limited range. Dima insisted we provide them to the people of Far Harbor, and I'm so glad we did. Without the condensers, I'm not sure they'd have anywhere left. If there's anything I can do to help out, just let me know. Well, if you're determined to help, there is something you could do. It's likely somewhat dangerous, though, so I understand if you'd rather not. There's a boat along the coast of the island. It was transporting some hardware we needed. Storage drives. The boat never finished the trip, you see, so the drives are still out there. I could really use them here, for extra parts, if nothing else. 
my understanding is that the boat wrecked southwest of here. So, does this sound like something you could handle? What happened to the boat? Why didn't it make it? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Trappers, fog crawlers, there's no end to what's out there. And what might still be out there. The point is that we already lost someone once. And I don't want to see that happen again. So, are you up for it? No, not a chance. Ah, right. Well then, perhaps some other time. I don't do much for free, Faraday. Ah, right. Of course. I should have thought of that. How does 100 caps sound? Didn't you say this might be dangerous? 100 caps seems a little light if danger is involved. Well, yes, there is that possibility. Uh, would 200 caps be more agreeable? Faraday, come on. I want to help you, I really do. 200 caps is just... I mean, it's a little insulting. Oh. Oh dear. I'm so sorry, insulting you was not my intention. Is 300 caps less insulting? That's really about all I can spare. Why don't we just agree that you'll give me all the caps you've got? Fine. 400 caps is as much as I can spare. Now please, let me know when you found the drives. Sure thing, Faraday. I'll get the drives for you. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. With that, we begin the side quest, Data Recovery. Retrieve the storage drives. As we head out to get started, we see Chase in a Courser outfit leaning against a wall. What's the Courser doing here? <clears throat> you track Kasumi here. I'm impressed. Perhaps not as quietly or efficiently as possible. But thankfully, she was never in any real danger. I'm afraid your journey was unnecessary. And miss out on a fun boat ride? Never. Well, then at least you have the return trip to look forward to. So, you're saying you could have done a better job of it? Didn't know it was a competition. Yes. Absolutely. I'm not convinced she is safe. By all means, look around. Investigate. We have nothing to hide. I wanted to see for myself that she's safe. You have my word. Acadia is a safe haven for synths. Were it not, I would not have aided anyone in reaching it. Every synth I've tracked down, every synth convinced to come here, has been assured that he or she will come to no harm. My job is to make sure they all remain safe, no matter what. Understand? How do you manage to track down synths and bring them here? I have a network of contacts throughout the area. Some from my time with the Institute, some after. I know the Institute's tactics, and use that to my advantage. Sounds like a pretty thankless job. I don't do it to be thanked. I do it because otherwise, we'd all be dead. That probably won't work out for you in the long run. We'll see. I'm very good at what I do. Hey, no argument from me. Good. Glad to hear it. You have Dima's blessing. So by all means, make yourself comfortable. So, what's your story? I used to be a courser. Returning synths that had escaped from the Institute. I was tracking a synth and instead found Dima. He convinced me of the truth and the error of my ways. I rejected the Institute, made sure they couldn't track me, and dedicated my life to instead helping synths find freedom. Tell me about Acadia. Dima's told you most of what you need to know. It's as safe as we can make it for now. With every new synth we rescue, we're better able to defend ourselves. I'd like to help you all. Is there anything I can do? Actually, as a matter of fact, there is. If you're serious about contributing, well, we've got a situation I need someone to look into. You've had some experience traveling around the island, so you may be decently equipped to handle it. That depends on what you need me to do. That's fair. If I were in your place, I would want as much data as possible. Some other time, maybe? Fine. Come and see me when you're ready. What's the problem? We were expecting a new synth to arrive, and he should have been here by now. There's been no sign of him, and I'm concerned that he might have become lost on the way here. I thought this was your job. Normally it would be, but tensions with the children of Adam are high right now, and I'm needed here to oversee security. Right now, you're the only option I have. I'll give you the details and you can do what you will. This island is a death trap. Your synth probably ended up as Mirelurk food. I certainly hope not, but I'd like to know for certain. You have any leads on where he might be? You should start by talking to Brooks in Far Harbor. He's one of us, a synth. He's the one who meets the new arrivals and gets them started on the journey here. Of course, he's not likely to tell you anything without proof that you're working for me. 
If he doesn't cooperate, tell him that his designation is L-792. That should convince him. That's as much help as I can give you for now. Please, hurry. If that synth is out there alone, he won't last long. And with that, we begin the side quest, The Arrival. Talk to Brooks. Incidentally, Chase's outfit here is completely unique, and it is possible to get it. We could, of course, kill her. Or if we have maxed out Pickpocket, a Pickpocket skill of four, we can loot it off her inventory. It requires Pickpocket of four to loot something that someone is wearing. But if we loot it without being detected, we can wear Chase's uniform. It has many of the same statistics as a Courser's uniform, a damage resist of 30, energy resist of 15, and a radiation resist of 15. But it also grants plus one to endurance and plus one to perception. That makes it superior to all other Courser outfits. Sadly, we can't modify it further. It does not accept Ballistic Weave. But it's a wonderful little coat with years of wear and tear. The bottom hem is completely tattered, and it looks like it's been repaired in a number of places. A great little item for the collector. Now, we could go downstairs to find Kasumi, but before we do that, let's try to tackle these tasks that Faraday and Chase have given us. But sadly, we're all out of time. We'll pick up right here where we leave off, in my next episode. I publish many Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. Sacrifices have to be made. If you agree that sacrifices must be made, you can find this design on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. It comes on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. Members and patrons are becoming ever more important as YouTube makes platform changes that make the future of monetization uncertain. So special thanks to all my members and patrons. You guys make these videos possible. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the next episode in the story of Far Harbor.